Good morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today for today's webinar. Get ready your DNA RNA for microbial biodiversity and identification brought to you by NextGene Scientific. Let me introduce myself. My name is Eileen from NextGene Scientific, serving as the moderator for today's webinar. Um, before we start, I'd like to seek for everyone cooperation to put your mic on mute. This presentation will last around 40 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. We encourage uh, you to participate actively during this event by dropping down any question at any time point of this webinar session. I believe our speaker will be happy to answer them all after her presentation. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce our speaker today, Ms. Joey. Ms. Joey is currently the product specialist from NextGene Scientific. So over to you, Joey. Thank you, Eileen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joey, a product specialist from NextGene Scientific in charge of Bangi, Kota Damansara, Nila, and Puchong, as well as Sarawak area. So do drop me an email or WhatsApp me if you have any inquiries. So uh, without any delay, let's start with our webinar today on Get Ready Your DNA RNA for Microbial Biodiversity and Identification. So um, here's a little context on today's webinar. I will separate into two parts. So the first part will be on identification to microbial bio biodiversity and its application towards research, followed by the second part where I will share with everyone on this series of ways to achieve a genomic material, starting with the sample preparation method, followed by nucleic acid isolation, and finally the downstream application of genomic materials. Then I will have a short summary on the topic mentioned above. And then we will have a very, very special promotion for everyone that has joined us uh, to the very end of the day. So quickly share the link to your friends now. And then we will have the Q&A session as our wrap up. So in today's context of microbial biodiversity, we are actually looking at the range of different kinds of unicellular organisms ranging from bacteria, archaea, protozoa, as well as fungi. So many of you might ask, why study microbial biodiversity? So by studying microbial biodiversity, we actually we can characterize species diversity of organism in order to monitor the changes upon environmental catastrophe and pollution. So other than that, we can also do comparative studies on difference between microbial community within species of healthy as well as sick individuals. Adding to that, microbial biodiversity study can also lead to identification of new species or genes that encodes useful metabolites such as antibiotics. So due to its importance, many fields adopted the study of microbial biodiversity. So here are some examples, including agriculture. In agriculture, study of microbiodiversity on fertile soil can lead to sorry, giving scientists an insight on the nutrient of the cycles and fixation, ultimately providing an idea on how to fix the nutrient-poor soil for agricultural purposes. In environmental, the microbial biodiversity study looks into pollution, for example, can be detected at an early stage for testing on water, for example, the drinking water, and then for biotechnology, microbial biodiversity can lead to discovery of new genes from microbes that imports important detection on antibiotic resistant microbes. Sorry. And in terms of healthcare, so uh, microbial biodiversity can be used to compare study of gut microbes to determine the level of probiotics in healthy and immunocompetent individuals. And in terms of food science, the microbial study can lead to detection of food quality and safety in sterilization, especially on canned food as well as pasteurized milk. So here I'd like to share a small publication by Jinja et al. on the effects of soil depth on structure of microbial community in agricultural soil in Loa, USA. So from this research, we can deduce that the community abundance composition as well as the diversity by depth in corn and soybean field in Loa using the amplicon sequencing. 
So based on the results in figure one on your left hand side, uh, sorry, on your right hand side, reveals that the lower richness and diversity in bacterial commodity as the depth of increases. They did that at high ATCM of soil depth is the most productive. So this finding is important and benefits for future management and productivity of agroeconomy. Okay. So here is an overview. So up to now, we have already uh, discussed on the importance of microbial biodiversity and its application. So moving on, I would like to look into the sample collection, preparation, DNA extraction, as well as the DNA analysis on the genomic materials. So we will start off with the sample type. So we have a few sample types here that are mainly used for microbial biodiversity study. Example would be the water, soil, fecal, as well as mountain glacier. And then here are some tips and tricks for sampling. So if you are using water as your sample, to increase the volume of water samples, a filtration method with filter paper comes into consideration. So this is important because um, sometimes water might have very little microbes, so you need to concentrate the microbe level by using filtration method. And also, if you are looking into plant sampling, do note that the chloroplast DNA can be a contaminant. And for storage-wise, do note that it will be more optimal to store your sample at minus 20 as compared to 4 degrees for inhibition of bacteria. So again, if you are using soy samples and you have problem with humic acid issue, feel free to contact us for a supplementary protocol. Okay, so we start off with sample preparation. The goal of sample preparation is to lyse cells to release its content that includes DNA, RNA, protein, as well as other intercellular materials. So sample preparation can be broken down into non-mechanical as well as mechanical methods. So we are looking into non-mechanical methods that includes the physical, chemical, and biological method. There is no fixed methods that is 100% correct. Every method has its pros and cons, as you can see below. However, uh, mechanical methods generally homogenizer, is widely accepted method for microbial study because it is effective to lyse difficult cells because of its unique optimization motion. So um, the next up, I'll be sharing a video on MPBIOS homogenizer. So from the video, you can capture the advantage of the homogenizer. So uh, I will start by playing the video now.
Okay, so from the video, we can deduce that the fast prep can cater into different interchangeable adapters for different tube size. For example, you can see here, there is the 50 ml tube size as well as the 15 ml tube size. So in addition to that, MP Bio has a very special adapter that can withhold dry ice during homogenize, homogenization process to ensure that the RNA samples are being protected. So also, MPBio have different lysis metrics, as you can see uh, in the next slide, that can custom for different samples as shown here for better lysis effect. So for example, if you're looking into samples such as tooth that is very hard to lyse, then the matrix A and matrix M can be an example of metrics to be chosen. So moving on, the fast prep is also suitable with all different types of extraction kits to enhance the efficiency of extraction from DNA to RNA, as well as protein for the downstream application. So now upon lysis of samples, let's look into the extraction methods that is commercially used. So here I'd like to share two methods, namely the conventional as well as the commercial methods. So for conventional methods, it involves phenochloroform so chloroform alongside with phenol separates between aqueous and organic solvent. So the density of chloroform is higher compared to phenol and water, causing a separation of organic and aqueous phase. However, this skill is not easily operated and a very technical and skilled researcher is needed for this procedure. And also chloroform is very toxic to humans. So in order to overcome these problems, Many commercial kits have been developed over the years. So different commercial kits uses different buffer and binding matrices that serve different purposes that we will explore in the following slide. So, so here are the DNA binding matrix that is commonly used in the commercial kit. So here we can divide the binding matrix into silica as well as magnetic beads. So for silica, it is further divided into uh, glass milk as well as the spin column method. So for spin col oh, sorry, for glass milk, it is less in the market nowadays, but MP Bio still provides it because it is suitable for samples that have low biomass. So low biomass here refers to uh, le lower level of microbes within the samples. So for the spin column methods, on the other hand, it's more widely used and recommended for difficult or hard to handle samples, especially samples with human acid. So for magnetic beads, on the other hand, it's suitable for application that looks into high throughput. So there are many kits in the market out there but I have deduced a few criteria for a good DNA extraction kit. So starting with a wide range of samples, example, the extraction cater for soil should be suitable for all kinds of soil, example, the clay soil, the organic soil, sand soil, and others. So next, based on performance, we are talking about yield and purity here. So in terms of yield, you can see from the right-hand side, the image, the top image of an electrophoresis, showing an intact singular band indicating a high yield in the sample, while the lower image represents a poor quality with smears of RNA contamination. So the, okay. so the purity then is based on the absorbent ratio wavelength as well. For 260 to 280, the purity should be around 1.8, and for wavelength of 260 to 230, the it should be around 1 to 2.0. <laughs> so, okay. Then the another good criteria of DNA extraction kit is that it has a short processing time. So what is considered short here is approximately 35 minutes per sample. It's considered short processing time. So again, lastly, the difference in price. Of course, we have to calculate the cost per run for each sample. So that will be under consideration for a good DNA extraction kit. And then now we'll look into, after looking into the criteria here, we would like to share on choosing the correct kit for our application. So here's a summary of the kits available by MPBio. 
If we are looking for a kit that is easy to use and process different samples at large quantity, then Spin Easy DNA Extraction Kit will be suitable for your application. However, if you are looking for automation because of high throughput, then the magnetic bits method using the MagBit Pass DNA Kit will be a greater option. And lastly, if you are looking into high yield, the fast DNA spin kit using the glass milk method will be very suitable for your application. So you may ask, how is spin easy considered easy to be used? So along with MPBIOS evaluation on the right hand side, you can see that based on the performance done on different soil samples, we can see that different soils have been used for testing this Spin Easy DNA Extraction Kit. There are examples of the organic soil that has high humic acid, the saline soil that has high salt content, and the desert soil that has low biomass, all of which show intact DNA with the use of Spin Easy, having high purity and DNA quality with effective lysis. Then moving to uh, MAC Beat Fast DNA Kit for Fickle. Here, there is two magnetic racks that's available by MPBio, the magnetic rack of 8 and 24 holes to support this kit. So for, high tr for higher throughput automation machine can also be available. So this kit can be used to uh, evaluate the different fickle by looking into the fickle samples done by the MPBio team on the left hand side on the electrophoresis analysis. It shows different kind of fickle being used. So you can see from lane one to lane six is by using manual extraction, while lane seven to lane 12 uses the automation extraction. Other than that, from an example of the chicken fickle, you can see the MP bio having the blue bar on the left hand side from figure two shows the highest uh, yield being uh, highest yield for using by using the MacBit extraction kit. So, okay, so the final is on the fast DNA spin kit for soil. This is considered the gold standard for DNA isolation. How is this a gold standard? So looking into the research done by MPBio team uh, on the right hand side. Here, we can see that uh, the fast DNA spin kit for soil outperformed the other four commercial kit with DNA extraction of plankton communities from freshwater re reservoir. So this indicates a complete lysis of all organisms with high quality of nucleic acid. And also for this kit, the cell lysis time is only 40 seconds and the kit uh, and a complete purification of DNA is less than 30 minutes per sample. So moreover, for fast DNA spin kit for soil, uh, there has been more than 7,000 publication that uses this kit. So, and also different types of samples. For example, the uh, crop samples, the mountain glacier, seawater, sand, pickle, and metal contaminated soil. Okay, other than the DNA extraction kit, we do have a fast RNA extraction kit as well. So we have two types of fast RNA pro soil extraction kit. One is the you, one is using the indirect method, and another is using the direct method. So for indirect method, um, an another separation step is needed before the kit can be applied. However, the direct method you can apply. Uh, you can apply your application using the kit as soon as the soil sample is being extracted. Uh, as long as the soil sample is ready to go for extraction. Okay, so uh, here is a typical downstream application of DNA analysis. So uh, example would be single sequencing, or if you're looking for a more advanced method will be the next generation sequencing using the amplicon stick, the shotgun meta genome, as well as the meta transcriptomic analysis. Okay, so here we will look into the generations of uh, DNA analysis. So starting from the first generation, we are looking into single sequencing. 
this method involves the isolation of pure single colony samples, which can be quite tedious at times. So that's why with the advancement of uh, technology, there is the second generation, next generation sequencing, looking into the microbial biodiversity and identification of communities within microbes. However, there are some limitations for this uh, technology as well, in the sense that um, in this technology, not all samples can be identified up to species level. So with modern technology and advancement, the third generation um, analysis is being discovered. From here, uh, it, use, it can be used for assembly of microbiomes and WGS for a species. So an example of third generation sequencing will be the Oxford Nanopore uh, machine. So here is a summary for today's uh, topic on the process of microbial biodiversity identification. So we have already covered the starting with sample preparation. So the mechanical method is preferred over the non-mechanical method as mentioned earlier for environmental samples. And this can be supported by our MPBIOS fast prep instrument with range of adapters that are suitable for all kinds of uh, that are suitable for all kinds of extraction kit. So once the sample is sliced, we move on to the DNA extraction steps. It can be done using different extraction kit. So we have already covered a few. If you're looking into high yield, then you can go for the fast DNA spin kit that uses the glass bead methods. What if you're looking for something to be easy to use, then the spin easy is more suitable for your application. And if you're looking for an automation possible with high throughput, then the map bit fast DNA will be more advisable for your application. So lastly, for analysis, uh, it can be done once the extraction of the genomic material is being obtained. So example of DNA analysis are, as mentioned, Sanger sequencing, as well as next generation sequencing on amplicon sequencing, shotgun metagenome, as well as metatranscriptomic. Now, the promotion that you all have been waiting for. So this time around, we'll be promoting on the Spin Easy, easy to use kit with high quality of DNA extraction for fecal and soil. So the promotion is the buy one free one promotion. So all you have to do is just key in this uh, promo code Spin Easy to your local product specialist, or you can contact sales at NextGen for more information. So other than that, we do from we do have a demo for our homogenizer as well. If you are very interested for your uh, laboratory to ease all your problems, this can be a good investment because it's just a very small tabletop instrument that requires uh, very minimal maintenance. So again, if you need any offer on the demo, you can always contact your local product specialists, or you can contact us at NextGen for more information. So I'll wrap up with a Q&A session. Okay, thank you, Julie, for your wonderful presentation. We will go ahead with the Q&A session. Please feel free to voice out any question by unmuting your mic. If you are too shy to talk, you also can type in your questions in the chat box. We will answer them uh, accordingly. Yeah. So for the first question is from uh, Prof. Uh, Mark Dunn. Uh, the question is, uh, do we have magnetic bits for extracting RNA? Joey, uh, you would like to answer for this question? Uh, hold on, yeah. Uh, can you please uh, answer this question on the magnetic bit extraction for RNA? Uh, so yeah, I thought you have the kit 
uh, for the showing the RNA extraction. Yeah, we do have, but um. Yeah. So, uh, Prof. Morning. So, uh, I'm Ji Hong here. So, uh, everybody, we do have the uh, fast RNA kit. Pros, uh, we call it fast RNA pro soil kit. So, it actually um for extract action of uh, RNA from soil sample. However, for magnetic bead, currently we have. Uh, we haven't have the product for uh, RNA extraction yet for soil sample, but we have it uh, for DNA only. So maybe in the future, we will have the, the product for our RNA that we can uh, actually introduce to Prof. Okay. So uh, and then the second question, uh, so it's from uh, Asa. Uh -huh. Yeah, so in extracting DNA, so is it workable for mushroom tissue or and any result to support it? Okay, so here I would like to share some uh, link that I just found. So for more information, then I will need um, more search, uh, search then after that um, to check on using the fast DNA kit or fast DNA spin kit for soy uh, for mushroom sample. Okay, so the first uh, link that I share is actually uh, it's a journal with title called Spatial Distribution of Below Ground Mycelia of uh, Ectomycorrhizal Fungus Inferred from Specific Quantification, uh, sorry, Quantification of its DNA in Soil Sample. So basically, it's actually extract DNA from soil sample and then trying to detect the um, quantity of the um, fungus in the soil. Okay, so the second one is actually not directly uh, checking on the um, mushroom itself, but actually um, checking on the um, the bacteria uh, community that live uh, near to the mushroom. Okay, so and then after that, they actually look at the, the bacteria community uh, extracting the DNA and then um, to check on those um, bacteria live alongside the, the mushroom. So maybe uh, okay. if Asa can uh, share a contact with us, I think we have the contact, then maybe we can uh, provide more uh, information and publication about uh, this uh, extraction of DNA from mushroom. Okay, thank you, Chi Hong and Joey. Uh, we will move on with the next question for Wan Wan. So uh, Wan Wan, you're using fast spin DNA kit. So uh, Wan Wan's question is, uh, do you have recommendation on the speed and time of homogenization of fungal mycelia? Currently, I'm using lysis matrix A, but the mycelia does not seem to be lysing properly, while mechanical homogenization, not MP bio homogenized. So uh, maybe Joey or Chi Hong can answer the question. Okay, so I think I will take the question. So this one, uh, for troubleshooting, then we might need a little bit more um, uh, information. So we might uh, contact one one uh, later. So uh, we need to know that the current homogenizer that you're using and like uh, the duration, how long you actually uh, uh, perform the lysis step. And then, yeah, then from there on, then we can actually see what kind of things that we can uh, prolong the time or um, to change. And also regarding the amount, actually, uh, because we're using a lysing matrix, okay? So the lysing matrix A, if for those that is uh, not familiar with the product, it's actually inside a two mil tube. And then the lower parts of the tube is actually filled up with the lysing matrix A. So therefore, normally about the amount of sample, we have two recommendations. One is according to the um, amount stated in the manual. Normally, it's around 50 milligram or something like that. Okay, So you can actually try to weigh the, the tissue or let's say the sample according to the amount recommended. Do not exceed it. Okay, The second one is actually the amount according to the volume. So meaning that when we actually put in the sample and then after that we put in the lysis solution into the tube, we need to leave some room between the cap and the uh, maximum vo uh, volume so that there are gaps uh, for the lysis to happen. If the water level is too high, very uh, higher than actually there's, a, we, we actually have a mark for the maximum fill up volume. So if you are over that particular mark, then actually there are no room for the lysis to happen. You actually uh, uh, affects the, the lysis uh, complete lysis of the sample. So these are maybe some of the things that we can look at also. Mm. So uh, perhaps uh, we'll contact uh, one month later to actually get more information and see how we actually 
uh, trick on the uh, lysis and get more yield. Okay, uh, so it's the second question from one one as well. So what is the recommendation, uh, recommended starting material for DNA extraction for maximum yield? Okay, so this one I think I already uh, covered. I, I think the, I mean, I, I interpret as the amount of the uh, starting material required. So if you are talking about the sample type, then uh, our kit can be processed uh, like um, feces, soil sample and water sample and all that. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chi Hong. Um, next question uh, from Prof uh, Mazan. So uh, can you help me to identify for unknown DNA or RNA viruses? Okay, um, this one is a bit tricky, Prof. Uh, not so tricky, uh, but it might actually need another um, um, application, uh, not application, uh, 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 technology. So uh, if let's say Prof need to identify unknown DNA or RNA virus, um, one of the things that we can try is using uh, uh, next generation sequencing. But the challenges will always be, I mean, we have some customer trying to do that also. The problem is actually because the sample might contain too many um, like other community like bacteria and other uh, uh, living organism. So their DNA, uh, because in NGS, we actually sequence uh, anything and everything. So the proportion of the target uh, targeted organism is very uh, important. If let's say the number of virus in the sample is actually low, so the chances that we're able to sequence the virus instead of let's say uh, the bacteria, uh, it depends on the proportion. So that's why this one remains a very challenging thing. Um, unless there is some pre-processing that can help to actually remove those um, unwanted organism and then try to um, um, enrich for the virus uh, particle, then it will actually help to uh, getting more um, NGS uh, information that is on the, the virus uh, only. La. So it, it might actually help um, increase the chance, but again, it will still be very challenging because we are, normally we don't, we are not sure whether the, um, the number of the virus uh, their proportion versus, let's say, the other things that are living in the same uh, sample. Mm. And of course, the best one is, which is actually also a bit hard, is actually we have the primers. So just as an example, so uh, currently uh, we have the, the, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, um, um, pandemic, and then uh, we actually use primer to actually increase the number of the viral RNA and DNA um, after we convert it, okay? So that we, when we sequence it using uh, next generation sequencing, we actually get more um, uh, RNA information of the virus genome instead of, let's say, the human RNA. Mm. But however, designing the primers, because sometimes uh, like uh, Prof here, the problem is unknown viruses. So that's why it's a bit hard for designing of the primer. Mm. And currently we don't have like a, much info about the universal primer for viruses. So I would say for now, one of the way maybe we can do is we try to enrich the virus in the sample first uh, using maybe centrifugation or even filtration method. And then if we go for the sequencing, then we hope the, for the best. Okay, thank you, Chi Hong. So, thank you, uh, yeah. uh, may I know if anyone has any more questions for our speaker today? You may uh, voice out any question by unmuting your mic or uh, leave it the uh, question in the chat box. Uh, Hi, Jihan, uh, you have anything to add on? Um, okay, uh, uh, I, I think, I mean, if you guys have any, any problem if, when you are using or if you, even if you are not using uh, the, 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 our uh, kit from uh, MPBio, but you are working on, let's say, um, soil, feces, or uh, yeah, and microbial by our community uh, sample, if you have anything, you can always contact us, feel free uh, to contact us, so uh, we can see whether what we can uh, help yeah so to give you some um uh 
info about uh, the latest thing that we can work on the sample or even uh, let's say to improve the current uh, um, methods of yours mm, i think that's all okay thank you Xi Hong. and uh joey is there anything else that you want to cover before we end our webinar session today uh, I would just like to say thank you everyone for joining. So uh, if you have any um, recommendations on the next topic that we can talk about, feel free to drop in the chat box. For example, if you want to know more about sample sequencing or even the Oxford Nanopore, you can always drop us the uh, message and the topic that you are interested in and we can see where we can go from there. So thank you everyone. Okay, uh, thank you Joey. Uh, that's the end of, of, of our webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining our webinar session today. Feel free to contact us at sales at nextgen.my for any further inquiries. We will send uh, the recording of this webinar and the slides to all the participants after the webinar session so that you can watch it again at a later time or share it with someone who might be interested. We hope that you find this webinar useful and engaging. We would like to ask all participants to kindly fill in the survey form as shared in the chat box. Your feedback will be valuable in helping us to improve our future event. Okay, last but not least, safe, take care, and have a pleasant day ahead, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, speaker. Thank you, team.